I want to talk more about these protests and other developments here, so let's bring in a guest. Louis Al Sharif is an Arab peace activist from Abu Dhabi, joining us now live to discuss all of this. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Thank you so much, Josh, and uh, hope things go uh, easy on campuses. Yeah, well, first off, I do want to ask kind of your thoughts as you're seeing this all play out. You have seen the different protests that take place coast to coast, and you have locations like UCLA, Columbia University, where things have gotten a little out of hand between the protesters and law enforcement. What goes through your mind looking at that? Well, first of all, I was in the United States for a month touring campuses, going from a campus to a campus, talking about the Abraham Accords and peace between Arabs and Israelis. And forgive me to say this, Joshua, it seems that the American people do not really understand the Middle East uh, enough, just like credible Arab sources um, like us, of course, and they don't really understand the complication. And they are putting the pressure on the wrong side. The pressure should not be put on Israel to end all of this ugly war. This ugly war started when Hamas invaded the territories that are not disputed, even according to the UN, and killed hundreds of people, hundreds of people in the Supernova Music Festival, and uh, stormed the kibbutzim, the, uh, the places where the Israelis were living at, killed innocent people while they were sleeping. It was Simhat Torah, and then kidnapped more than 100 or 200 hostages and including babies and kids and, and, and the elderly. And now no one is putting pressure on Hamas to release those hostages and lay down its arms to end this war. They are putting the pressure on the wrong side. I just saw in the, in the, in the interview or in the report that was just uh, uh, played a while ago on your channel that a student says, we are not going to move until, we, until there is a deal reached. Well, I, I, I hope they would say we are not going to move until Hamas lays down its arms and release all the hostages. And this would lead to a war end, not today, not, not now, but in the exact second it would end now. So unfortunately, not so many people know uh, lots of things that are happening in the Middle East. They don't speak Arabic. They don't understand the culture. They don't understand the real history of this conflict, and they're being uh, manipulated, I would say. And I want to talk about something else that is making headlines here, as the Houthis terror group has put out several messages at this point in recent days saying that they have a place for students who are suspended, expelled from U.S. colleges after staging these protests, inviting them to essentially come get an education in Yemen. I want to get your thoughts overall on those continued statements from the Houthis. If a single student from those pro-Hamas uh, supporters, sympathizers, answer this call, go to Yemen, survive a day, I would delete my account, I would stop being a pro-peace activist with Israel, I would stop being pro-peace activist for the Abraham Accords, and I would absolutely stop all the activities and bring more Arabs who are in this peace activism to stop. But we know that this wouldn't happen. And we, all, we, all, we also know that those who would cheer for Hamas, they would never survive a single day under the ruling, but they think they are doing something for a better cause. We do care about the Palestinians, even the Arab activists for peace. We do care about the Palestinian people and the innocents, but we believe that what Hamas committed on October 7th was suicidal. It was a suicidal operation that brought Gaza into hell. All of this started on October 7th and not in 1948, like people say, because the attack didn't happen on disputed lands. The attack happened on an undisputed land, which was, according to the UN, a land, an Israeli land. Both people have the right to live and exist peacefully and in dignity. But of course, Hamas doesn't believe in that. So. The Houthis or Hamas or some radical extremists who invite those students, I would say, please go, survive a day, and then let's have a chat. Israel has essentially given, we'll call it an ultimatum to Hamas and said, either accept a truce deal here, uh, or we are going to do the Rafah offensive. We're going to go into Rafah 
And that is going to happen. So it's an either, you know, accept the deal or that. So my question for you, are we any closer to a hostage release ceasefire deal than we were, let's say, a week ago, several months ago? I am not, unfortunately, I am honest with you, Joshua. I'm not optimistic because I know very well that Hamas plays on this um, on this nerve. Hamas knows very well that the lives of the Israelis matter. But Hamas knows also that the lives of the Palestinians do not matter. This is why Hamas takes an advantage of how many Palestinians are killed to amplify its propaganda. But Hamas knows that each and every one of the hostages mean a lot to Israel. They have families. Israel is a democracy where the families of the hostages can protest and stand in streets and call for the release of the hostages, whatever the cause is or whatever the, the price is. Um, I hope there would be a deal, but Hamas has to know, Joshua, and everyone, every person who has sanity has to know that Israel would never, I believe so, would never accept any deal that would mandate the end of this war and keeping Hamas in power so that they would do October 7 again and again and again, and people then whine in the world asking Israel to stop this war or asking for a ceasefire or asking for, look how Israel is retaliating. Like it's very acceptable now in this world that we're living in. The Jews have to be killed without having any consequences that never again is again. And and look who's paying the price. Who's paying the price are also the innocent Palestinians in Gaza and the innocents who want to have a better life that Hamas is taking away from. What do we expect that a Rafah offensive would look like? We know that there have been airstrikes that have been taking place as recently as today. So what do we think an actual offensive, an operation would, would look like? I personally don't wish that Rafah offensive would take place. I personally wish that Hamas would lay down its arms, release the hostages in this crazy war and just leave and the Palestinian Authority would be rehabilitated and take over Gaza. This is my wishful thinking. And of course, I know that it's not going to happen. So how Rafah would look like? It would look awful, a catastrophe. Um, it doesn't seem that Israel will just uh, take it as a walk in the park. Israel, will, Israel insists on el eliminating the last battalion of Hamas in Rafah, and it will turn ugly. But Hamas can end this. If Hamas cares about the lives of the Palestinians in Gaza, it can end this now by releasing the hostages, laying down its arms, and a Palestinian authority, a rehabilitated one, would, would re-engage in peace talks that would lead to the Palestinians living in dignity side by side with Israel. All right, Luai Al-Sharif, thank you so much for taking the time to, to join us here and to help talk a little bit more about the latest developments. I know there are a lot of developments here, so anything else you want to add before I let you go? I would love the American audience to heed my warning, to listen very well to what I'm about to say, because it seems, Joshua, that unfortunately, the freedom of speech is taking uh, a different uh, route uh, to incitement. I want them to know that credible sources from the region are telling them peace is the only way forward. Israelis are not going anywhere and the Palestinians are not going anywhere too. The only solution is to have them living side by side with leadership that believes in this, with a Palestinian leadership that is capable of building a state and living side by side with Israel, not abolishing Israel or kicking out the Jews from their ancestral homeland. If Americans, white Americans, or Generation Z support this narrative, they should know that they are next. Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood and the radical extremists would target them next. You don't know them as much as we do. All right, Luai Al-Sharif, Arab peace activist from Abu Dhabi. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us and help talk about all of this. We appreciate it. Thank you, Joshua.